Right then guys, how's it going and welcome back to Your Football Predictions, the series where we try and predict all of the upcoming Premier League games. It's been a busy week, uh, we've had loads of football at the minute, the midweek games just finished yesterday and the Premier League starts up again tomorrow on the Saturday. Uh, so you guys have not got long to get your predictions in this week but I'm sure it's going to be another good weekend of football. Uh, those were my predictions from the midweek games, as I say, that just ended yesterday. Um, I've done all right the last few weeks, but I did not do very well this time round because I got zero correct scores. Um, but as always, loads of you guys commented on the last video, over 200 comments, over 120 likes, so thank you to everyone who got involved. Um, we had loads of people who got one correct score. We had loads of people who got two correct scores. And no one got three correct scores. So that just shows that it must have been a tough week for predictions. I mean, uh, Wolves beating Chelsea. Um, Everton beating Leicester. Man, you just beating Sheffield United 3-2. So, as I say, loads of people got two correct scores. And all of those people have won this week's video. Uh, and I am going to read you all out. So we have Jason, Kenny, Yogan, A... Y-A-O-M-V-P, Dean, Will, Vaccine, Nimit, John, Paddy, Jake, Connor, Mohammed. So I really doubt you can see me on screen right now, but well done to everyone um, who got the two correct scores for the midweek games. And remember, if you want to be shouted out in my next predictions video, which will be next week, ready for the Boxing Day football, be sure to get your predictions down below for the games starting tomorrow uh, for this weekend um, as always i'll go through all of your predictions and be sure to shout out the winner next week um, but as always we will go through the games now so saturday 12 30 on bt sport we have got crystal palace taking on liverpool crystal palace currently sitting in 12th place um have picked up a little bit of decent form recently three games ago they beat west brom 5-1 then got a very good one one draw against Spurs and then um, a one one draw against West Ham, uh, who were a team who were on good form. So you know three good games for Crystal Palace there, but they are taking on Liverpool, who are the new league leaders in first place after beating um, Spurs two one. You know I said that it was a big game, but it's still early in the season. There's still plenty of time to go, but to be sat, you know, a win ahead. Of second place going into the Christmas period you know it was a it was a good win to get uh, Liverpool, Liverpool's form over the last six games has been draw win draw win draw win so does that mean they're gonna draw against Crystal Palace possibly as I say um, it you know nothing's impossible in the Premier League this is why the predictions are quite tough but I have backed Liverpool I've backed them 2-1 you know, Crystal Palace have been on a, a decent little bit of form. And with Liverpool's defensive issues, Jota being out, you know, you never know. Next up again on the Saturday at 3 o'clock on Amazon Prime. So if you did get the free trial for the midweek games, and this will cover you for this as well. Uh, we have got Southampton taking on Man City. So again, Southampton, another team who are having a fantastic season, sitting in third place. At the moment, four points off the top spot. And their last six games, they've won three, they've drawn two, and they've lost one. Um, you know, for third place, you know, you might expect that to be even a little bit better. But again, it just shows how tight the league is at the minute, because everyone's beating everyone. Uh, they got their draw against Arsenal in the midweek. I did actually back them to beat Arsenal, because they are a team who are on poor form. But... You know, before the start of the season, the 1-1 draw with Arsenal, you would say, is a good result. And I still think it is now. Um, and it's not getting easier because they're taking on Man City uh, this weekend, who are currently sitting in ninth place. Um, again, if you had to guess at the start of the season, you probably would have guessed it the other way around. Man City in third, Southampton in ninth. Um, Man City the favourites for this one? You know, it's interesting. I'm, I'm not sure... Yeah, it's a tough one. Man City's recent form uh, in the last six of 1-2, drawn three, lost one. 
So similar form to Southampton with one more draw than a win. Um, Man City drew against West Brom in the midweek, which again, you know, at the start of the season or even before that game, people were predicting in the the predictions, you know, 4-0, 5-0, 3-1. I went um, 3-0. You know, big up West Brom who managed to get the, the draw and then go and sack the manager anyway. But we'll talk about that later. Um, so, yeah, what is your prediction for this one? You know, Man City, clearly not in the in the, the greatest place right now. Um, I have gone 1-1. I think I would still say Man City are the favourite. I just think it's Man City and, and just the players they've got. But I think that's maybe the issue is that the, the players they've got are fantastic, but for whatever reason, they're just not quite working together. You have no idea why, because the team is virtually the, the same as it has been for last season and the season before. I know the defence is a, bit, a little bit different, but attacking-wise, it's still Sterling, it's still De Bruyne, it's still Mahrez. Um, whereas Southampton really are clicking together. My man Che Adams doing the job there. So yeah, I've got 1-1, one, one. let me know what you think. Next up again on the Saturday at 5.30 on Sky, we have got Everton taking on Arsenal. Everton sitting in fifth place. You know, they had that fantastic start of the season. First five or six games were incredible. They then went on a, a losing streak of four out of five games. And then, more recently, have started to turn it around again. The last two games, they've beat Chelsea and Leicester. You know, and for a team who had been on a little bit of a slope, have suddenly shot back up with two really good wins. Uh, taking on Arsenal, um, 15th place. Where are they? Five points ahead of the relegation zone. Um, in the last six games, they've lost four and drawn two. Um, draw against Southampton, as I said. You know, if you're looking at that form and where they are in the league, you'd probably say it was a good result for Arsenal to get a draw against Southampton, who have been doing so good this season. Um, Arteta, you know... Are they sticking with them? Are they not? Obviously, there's a lot of talk that, you know, when things aren't going right, it's the it's it's the manager. And you know, is it Arteta? I don't watch enough of Arsenal to comment too much, but there's definitely something not working there. Um, I've backed Everton to win one nil. Um, I think when Everton play, they are they don't necessarily score loads of goals, but they seem to get it over the line and they get the job done. So I've gone with a narrow victory. Um, to them. Next up again on the Saturday night at 8 o'clock on Sky we have got Newcastle taking on Fulham. So Newcastle sitting in 14th place uh, last 6 games have lost 3 and won 3 so it's pretty much 50-50 there uh, lost against Leeds at the weekend 5-2 um, you know what can I say about that game uh I feel like, and I've been saying it for ages, and I know the pundits love to tell us how great Steve Bruce is doing in a job. And let's be honest, I'm a Newcastle fan. You know, I want whoever is the manager to do well. I want Brucey to do well. I want the team to do well. But when we're just winning 1-0, or we're just nicking a 1-1 against Spurs, or we're, you know, we're not playing well in those games. You know, generally... We have had some some good games. The West Ham game at the start of the season, the Everton game, we won those games, we played really well. But as a vast majority, we don't play very well. And then just nick a pen against Spurs in the last minute and come out with a 1-1, and everyone says that's a great result. It is a great result. But it doesn't mean I've just watched 90 minutes of useless football. It just showed exactly where we are because we played against a team who actually took their chances. You know, if we defend for 90 minutes and don't concede... 20 of the 20 shots against us and then we score our one chance and we win 1-0 you know everyone's happy because it was a three points we've played terribly and I've had to endure watching that but I think this game just unfortunately just showed where we are and I mean um, for a leader side who have been a bit up and down in form you know playing Newcastle is the perfect formula really um, and taking on Fulham, who are in 18th place, um, last four games, they beat Leicester, lost against Man City, drew against Liverpool, and then drew against Brighton. 
So, you know, they might be sat in the relegation zone, but the last four games, you know, I think I would have taken that before they got started. Five points from those games against Leicester, Man City and Liverpool. You know, maybe they, I thought they might beat Brighton after the after the, the few games. Um, prediction time. I mean, it's impossible to predict. Loads of these games are tough to predict. I honestly don't know. I've, I think it would be so typical for Newcastle to lose this, so I've gone 1-0 Fulham. Um, maybe the loss against Leeds will suddenly wake us up. We are playing at our own ground, so maybe that'll help. But Newcastle have got this thing of if we play the teams who are like above us, you know, Everton win, you know, West Ham, who are doing well this season, we beat them, but we lost against promoted Leeds. It would not surprise me if we lost against promoted uh, Fulham as well. So, yeah, let me know what you think of that one down below. Moving on to the Sunday now uh, at 12 o'clock. As I say, if you are watching this on Saturday night and you want to still get your predictions in for the Sunday Monday, please do. As I say, last week's winner's got two correct scores. Uh, it's been really tough um, this year. So, again, you could well still win it even watching this late. Uh, we have got uh, Brighton taking on Sheffield United. So Brighton currently sitting in 16th place. Um, obviously just above the relegation zone by two points. Uh, they've got 11 points from 13 games so far. Um, the draw against Fulham during the week. I said at the start of the season I felt like you know, it was similar to Fulham as well and Brighton. I felt like they were playing some tough games, but they had some good performances. They weren't just they just weren't picking up the points from the games. Um, but now, 13 games in, you know, those good performances need to actually count towards some points as well. Um, I mean, they're not in the relegation zone, which is good news, but they're going to want to be pulling away from that and taking on bottom of the league, Sheffield United. I think they are really going to be looking at this is three points. Um, as I just said, Sheffield United, 20th place, one point from 13 games, are now nine points off 17th. So that's nine points to get out of the relegation zone. And even then, the goal difference is only five different at the minute. So yeah, if they win three games, it, well, it could well be they would score more than five goals. So you know, three three games, you know, that three games behind, and that's presuming that no one above you is winning either. You know, we have got a long way to go, but it's not a good place. Uh, we saw them at the week, was it not the weekend, we saw them last night, um, losing to Man U 3-2. They were 1-0 up. They were able to get a second goal near the end of the game, but it just wasn't enough. Um, and considering Sheffield United have been a team that really haven't, been scoring goals you know that was another game that was tough to predict no one well I didn't think Sheffield United would have too much of a chance but they, they did show us that they can put the ball in the net um can they do it in this one I've gone nil nil it's very boring um and it could either it could it could go either way it could be one nil either way it could be one one I'm not seeing a high score line but I think at this moment in time, Sheffield United would probably take the draw. Um, and I think uh, Brighton at home, I think they should be hoping to win it. But yeah, let me know what you think down below. Next up again on the Sunday at 4.30, we have got Manchester United taking on Leeds. So, Man United, of their last six games, have won five of them. Uh, and one of those... And the game they didn't win was the draw against Man City. So, you know, that is not bad Premier League form right there. Uh, currently sitting in sixth place. Two points off second place. Five points off first place. So, you know, as I say, it is so tight right now. They're definitely in and around it. Um, as I mentioned, they beat Sheffield United during the week. Um, taking on a lead side who have just come off the back of a... Fantastic win against Newcastle. Currently sitting in 13th place. Um, you know, as I said this before, um, I've been talking all season about how Leeds have been an exciting team to watch and how they can get goals and they can concede goals. And then I'm pretty sure in the last three or four games, it's either been 1-1 one, one or 1-0. One, 
And I had to say it because as soon as they played Newcastle, they went and scored five. Um, can they get five against Man U? I'm not sure. I think they could well get themselves a goal, but and as we've seen with Man U, they seem to go down in games. Does it take them conceding a goal for them to wake up, or is it just the not fully concentrated from the start of the match happened again against Sheffield United they went 1-0 down and then came back to be 3-1 up so I can well see Man U conceding but I just think the players they've got whether it's working perfectly or not Bruno Fernandes Pogba Rashford you know I say every week they've just got the capacity to just score when when they want and that maybe that's half the problem is when they want when do they turn up when do they start playing um, so I have back uh, Man United to win 3-1. Next up again on the Sunday at 7.15 on BT, we have got West Brom taking on Aston Villa. So West Brom sitting in 19th place. Three points of 17th, so three points on getting out of that relegation zone. So a win this weekend, um, uh, they'd have to score four or more goals to do it. Depending on what happens in the Burnley game, they could potentially get out of the relegation zone this weekend. Uh, they drew midweek against Man City 1-1. And how do you reward your manager for getting a, um, a draw against one of the best teams in the Premier League, one of the best teams in the world? You sack them. Uh, that's the way it works. Uh, and they've brought, they've brought in Sam Allardyce. Um, he hasn't been in a job for a few years now. But as we all well know, he's the bloke who... Who doesn't get relegated? He was a Newcastle manager. He was useless when he was here as well. Um, but we didn't get relegated, I suppose, until he left and then we did. Um, I know exactly why West Brom have done it. You know, I'm not a West Brom fan. I've not seen enough of their football. So I don't really, I can't really comment too much on Slavan Bilic. All I know was that they've just been promoted. They've not really done too much in the transfer window. They've just got to draw against one of the best teams in the league. And then they've sacked him. But what they want is reassurance, and I suppose if if what you want in a season is, is in a season is not get relegated, which is what West Brom want is a team who are fresh into the Premier League and after 13 games are sat in the relegation zone. They've thought we need to protect what we've got here. We need to stay in the Prem. Let's bring a man who knows how to do that. So you know, we don't know if it's the right call and, until the end of the season. Basically, if Sam keeps them up, then they did the, it could, they did the right thing. You know, it's it's a tough one. But, um, as I say, they are taking on Aston Villa, who are sitting in 11th place, drew 0-0 with Burnley during the week. In their last six games, they've lost 3-1, 2, drawn 1. Um, four, five points off fourth place. Again, the league is really tight again this year. Um, in terms of a prediction... You know, Aston Villa have looked really good at times, and then other other times not quite as good. It's 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 tough to predict what game they're gonna have. But they're taking on a West Brom side, and I think the players will be happy with the result they had in the week. I think the players will have that. Like whenever a new manager comes in, there's an immediate buzz. And if I had to bet someone to win, I'd actually be tempted to go West Brom. But it is still West Brom. It is the same players. You know, they will have that buzz, but it's the same players. And Aston Villa have been very decent this season. So I've gone 1-1. One, one. I think the buzz might be enough to pull them to a point, but maybe not enough for the three. Let me know what you think down below. Moving on to the Monday night now. So again, if you are watching this on the Sunday, if you get these next two right, you could well still be a winner of the video. Uh, we have got... 5.30 on Sky, uh, Burnley taking on Wolves. So Burnley are sitting in 17th place, as I said, just out of the relegation zone by a point. Uh, draw with Aston Villa during the week, uh, which was enough to jump over, well, to jump out of that relegation spot. Um, looking at Burnley's form, you know, in the last six games, they've won two, drawn three and lost one which is nine points and you know when you think of Burnley you just think oh they're not having a good season you know they're down in the relegation zones they've got 10 points this season and of the last six games of the 12 they've played they've got nine of them 
So the first six games got one point, the next six they got nine. So they've definitely turned a corner to be pulling the points in that quickly. You know, that kind of form, two wins, three draws, one loss. That's the same form Man City are on for the last six. So, you know, fair play. Burnley had a terrible start, but they've definitely turned it around. Take it on a Wolves size, who are sitting in 10th place. Um, I think Nuno must have been watching my video from earlier in the week because they went back to five at the back and they beat Chelsea 2-1. I've been saying it. I might have had an ulterior motive because my Wolves defender wasn't getting played in my fantasy team because Nuno changed to four at the back. He changed to five at the back and he still didn't play Kilman. So I lost either way. Um, but... And again, with, and again, with Wolves, um, a great win against Chelsea 2-1. They're sitting in 10th place. They're three points off fifth, four points off fourth. Um, and, you know, their recent form, I wouldn't necessarily have said, is that great. Over the last six, they've lost three, won two, drawn one. But I'm sure I heard them saying before the Chelsea game, it's the best Premier League start ever. Or one of the best starts they've had in a long time. So, you know, maybe I'm not giving them as much credit as they deserve. So, I actually think this is a really tough one to predict. I think, in my brain, I'm still along the lines of, oh, Burnley aren't doing too good. But, as I say, recent form has been much, much improved. Um, I can't see a big scoreline. If Wolves are at five at the back again, I think they're going to be very protective. I've gone 1-0 Wolves. But it's another one. Um, nil, nil, one, 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 nil either way, I think will be a popular prediction from you guys and to finish things off again on the monday at eight o'clock on sky we have got chelsea taking on west ham so chelsea are sitting in seventh west ham are sitting in eighth with just one point between them they are both one or two points off fifth place uh Two or three points of fourth place, three or four points of second place. So again, it's I'm basically trying to say it's two teams who are, yeah, seventh and eighth, but could very quickly be in the top four if they were to get a win in this game, maybe the next one as well. Um, Chelsea's recent form, I mean, hasn't been too great after what had been a, um crazy unbeaten streak for how long it had been uh, lost against Everton then lost against Wolves and the last six have won three drawn one and lost those two um, I was going to say have they lost it you know I don't think they have I just think the last two games have not gone their way uh, West Ham, as I say, our eighth place drew against Crystal Palace during the week. In their last six games, have won four, drawn one, and lost one. Um, and I actually looked through this, and West Ham have scored in every single game this season except the first game when they lost against Newcastle two 0 So again, twelve Premier League games in a row, whether they've won, lost, or drawn, they've scored. You know, that is not a bad stat to have because if you always get one, you've got at least a chance of a draw or a win. Or a win or maybe a draw. Um, prediction time. <laughs> Again. Uh, I think Chelsea are the favourites. I know they've not been good in the last two. But I just think they've got so much firepower. And you know, they have lost the last two. But generally, I think stats-wise, one of the best defensive teams in the league. Um, and it, you know, again, I'm I'm saying that about Chelsea, but West Ham scored almost every single game. Defensively, have also been pretty solid as well. I've gone two on Chelsea, but who do I know? I got none right last week. <laughs> and that is it, guys. So those are all of my predictions up there for the weekend's football. As I say, the weekend starts tomorrow. Um, it's already less than 24 hours while I'm making this video and then I need to get it uploaded as well. So hopefully it's some viewing for you guys tonight and tomorrow morning. And as I say, if you are watching it late but still wanting to get your predictions in, I do generally monitor it and I always come back on the Sunday to try and pick up any 
late predictions. So if you can, get your predictions in before the first game tomorrow at 12.30. I'll make a note of all of your predictions and shout out the winner in next week's video when we predict the Boxing Day football. You know, I don't know how about you guys, but maybe it's because we're all stuck in the house. It doesn't feel very Christmassy this year. Um, but yeah. Thank you all for watching, as always. Um, if you are enjoying this series, do drop a like. As I say, so many likes and comments on the last few videos has been absolutely incredible. I think the last video is almost at 3,000 views as well. Um, and I posted that video, I think, with two days before the game started. So, you know, you guys are enjoying them. I'm really enjoying making them as well. Um, and if you are watching them, but you've not hit that subscribe button, then please do, because it makes um, a big difference to the channel and to me as well. Uh, but as always, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Enjoy the football this weekend, um, and I'll be back next week uh, for another predictions video. Alright, thanks for watching, guys. Catch you later.